I am a mother of two children, a biological 11-year-old and a now 20-year-old adopted son. When we first adopted Charles, he was 15 years old from CPS, and he was diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder. Uh, Charles had come to us with a lot of trauma, as most CPS children um, that have been in the system uh, have endured, uh, only Charles was a little different. Um, his mother is currently serving two life sentences and was diagnosed with schizophrenia. That uh, was a little alarming to us, but we thought that by allowing ourselves to really understand the family history and being watchful, that, you know, things could and, and would be okay with Charles. Charles came to us when he was 15 years old. Um, final adoption paperwork uh, when he had turned 16. And he was a tremendous, loving and funny young man. And he immediately was a loving son. <laughs> and um, it wasn't until he was 17 years old that we started noticing a lot of changes. Um, we started noticing a lot of behavioral things and when I was rereading his psychological, uh, things just weren't adding right. It just didn't make sense anymore uh, considering the medications and the behaviors that we were seeing. So we decided to um, ask or the, his psychiatrist to take a look at, you know, the psychological and revisit that. And he, um, the, the psychiatrist came back and told us that he didn't, he no longer had the oppositional defiant disorder, that perhaps it was a misdiagnosis, that his true diagnosis was schizoaffective with bipolar. Shortly thereafter, um, I noticed that my son was manic and he wasn't sleeping and he went out one night and did not come back home only to find out the next day that he went to his school and he had brought guns i was um <laughs> as any mother would be very heartbroken and scared so i remember that day clearly going to the school and bringing him outside and talking to him and not being able to reach him. And so I was able to remove the guns from, from the property and uh, turn them into the police department. Um, after that, he was expelled permanently from the district. Uh, he did not come home for several days. He was off his medications. And we quickly found out that he was breaking into people's houses and stealing cars. And we were getting knocks on the door. The police was looking for him. And as a mother going out and looking for him in the middle of the night until three, four o'clock in the morning, I was scared. And then we found out that he was in jail. So time has gone by and he was in and out of jail. Uh, my husband and I uh, didn't even know where to begin. I have a history of um, working with CRCG. So as a community partner, uh, we started reaching out to different resources because when you are a part of CRCG, you are very familiar with the resources out in the community. And so I was able to start reaching out. I reached out to post adoption services, never received a phone call back. Um, and they figured, well, he's one month away from turning 18. I reached out to a former um, 
former CASA workers and they were, they pretty much told me, I'm sorry, we can't talk to him. Um, so everybody that was involved in his life uh, were gone. Shortly thereafter, uh, we were able to find housing for him. And one night, uh, my husband and I were out of town with, with our 11 year old son and Charles broke into our house and stole from us. But the, the scariest part about all of this was that he had actually brought a gun to the house. He left the gun holster on the coffee table. And when upon our return, we saw what every mother I think would be completely scared of. And it was a realization that the situation was no longer safe. It was no longer safe for anyone and Charles was not safe. Uh, so we were able to pull ourselves together and understand that no matter how many services sometimes, no matter how much help, the trauma within uh, the, you know, the, the, our loved one is too much. And, and it's something that as parents, sometimes we just need to understand that we just can, we can't, even though we do a lot, that sometimes that we just can't fix the situation. And this is one of them. Um, and so because of that, our relationship was strained. And for safety reasons, we are unable to communicate with him. And I remember looking back at these five years and what it was like for our family. It was, it was a nightmare, to say the least to wake up and know that your son isn't well. And, and as a mother, that's, that's the most painful thing that one can even fathom when we can't even reach our own child. I remember someone once asked me, how are you still standing? And I thought about that. And I remember answering, because the fire within me burned so much brighter and stronger than the fire that was going on around me. And that is what gives me hope. And that is what gives me the passion to work with families through my job as a certified family partner to help them find the resources to help them find their voice. To help them find their voice.